Hello and welcome to a uh, lecture on uh, the Lebersock uh, project and um, the core of this material will cover the differences between uh, developing something for an FPGA and developing it for an ASIC and how to um, uh, go about uh, being able to target both. We can also target uh, simulations um, in several different ways, but that's out of scope for this uh, particular uh, particular um, uh, course. So, um, a bit of background. This is our project. Um, it's our main website. It, it's a wiki. Um, uh, it's editable. We're a Libra project. Okay, and that has very specific uh, meanings. It, me it means the majority of open projects, um, uh, uh, they will uh, throw the code only when it's ready and when it's done. Um, Libra, um, we uh, everything is transparent. Um, uh, uh, we make all source code and all technical discussions um, uh, about that source code are pub entirely public and real time. Um, uh, also, um, there are um, uh, uh, ethical guarantees um, uh, for behind Libra that uh, um, uh, that uh, where um, open is uh, considered unethical um, uh, because um, there is no requirement that people who use it actually contribute back the modifications and enhancements that they need to they need to do, whereas Libra requires that you contribute back those modifications. So um, uh, on the sidebar here, you can see that there is a number of resources, including our charter, um, links to the mailing list and archives, um, uh, etc., etc. Now, um, let's go first of all over um, uh, the LibreSoc core itself and then expand out uh, from there. So what we have is um, a, a, we are running a, a very simple finite state machine. Um, it is not a pipeline design and the reason for this is because it can be used as an exercise, an academic exercise because it's very straightforward and easy to see how it, how it works. When you get into pipelining, um, it becomes uh, extremely complex. The um, uh, 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 the overlaps uh, are just you, you you have to know a lot about the internals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we did was uh, we went through the standard fetch, decode, um, uh, uh, issue, and ex execute uh, phases, but did so one cycle at a time. So it's it run, pipelines they will run them uh, that run all of those in overlaps. Whereas this, it will it, it does a fetch stage, waits for that to complete, then passes the instruction that is fetched to the decode phase, waits for that to complete. On decode, it's been identified, be able to identify what the instruction is, so it can then then read the registers that are needed. Here, it then passes those to uh, a pipeline. Now we have multiple satellite uh, pipelines. It's not just one pipeline in, in the LibreSoft design. There's actually 12 separate pipelines because we're, uh, design, we're planning ahead for an advanced design. And uh, there again, it waits for to execute for complete for the execution to complete, and then that's followed up by writing the results to register files. And then in an intrusive fashion, um, what we do is we detect if the program counter was written to by the previous by, by one of the pipelines. And if it was not written to, then the, the issuer finite state machine will increment the program counter and store that in the, the, the register file, but it also detects the MSR register, which is part of the power instruction set. And um, there is a separate pipeline, um, uh, finite state machine for updating the deck and the TB uh, register, which are t a timer, um, timer and decrement uh, registers. Now, and then it goes back and does it all again. Now, a little bit more detail going over that uh, thing. Um, 
the the program called the fetch phase uh, uh, of the finite state machine will fetch over the instruction wishbone bus. Okay. At the decode phase, we have a um, a class, a Python class called Power Decoder. Sorry, Power Decoder two. Uh, by the way, all of this is written in Namigen. Namigen outputs Verilog. There's a very specific reason for doing it that way, way and using um, uh, Namigen rather than Verilog because Verilog is 1990s technology. You cannot do classes, you cannot do uh, properly do interfaces, and it, it, it's, it creates unwieldy, unmanageable code. We therefore consider Verilog to be a machine code target. Right, and that's how the machine uh, the Namigen works. So, um, uh, the Power Decoder 2 will actually um, uh, uh, decode um, the uh, binary instruction, but it also receives the interrupt lines, external interrupt and other uh, interrupt sources. And on the basis that when a interrupt occurs, you need to execute a uh, an interrupt. Uh, uh, you need to, uh, to, to, to carry out um, uh, changes to the program counter, you need to uh, a thing, and it turns out that this is basically the equivalent to trap. So what we've done is, um, in a microcode form, is simply um, uh, 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 left the, uh, overloaded the trap mechanism to, to make it look like we're executing an instruction, and that instruction updates and replaces uh, the program counter and the MSR and stores the uh, old copies of those in SRR0 and SRR1. Right? But it's done by getting the power decoder to go, oh, um, there was an interrupt. I'm going to ignore the current instruction that came in for the decode phase. I'm going to issue a trap instruction, AKA interrupt microcoded instruction instead. Then, um, having decoded that, uh, that uh, instruction, you go for um, uh, you now. You can know what uh, registers would need, be, need to be read, and we have uh, a lot of separate register files: integer, condition register, SPR, slow, um, uh, state, fast, uh, um, and a fast re uh, SPR register file, which includes, which is very very small and has massive number of uh, uh, write ports read and write ports, um, but it's very small and it contains a uh, link register, um, tar register, a um, couple of others, um, which, are, which are needed for, 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 for high speed access. Um, and there's a separate XER register and that's merged into the SPRs when um, uh, it's read. And MicroWatt does exactly the same thing here. So having read all the registers, then go into uh, the pipeline execute phase. Now here, what we've got, because we have multiple pipelines, we also have multiple satellite power decoder two uh, instances. And these, thanks to using Python, we can subset those by the fields that are needed in the columns and uh, uh, um, uh, subdivide them sort of for the rows because at the back at back at here at the main decoder, the the main decoder decodes every instruction, but it only decodes enough information on how how to identify the registers to be read, the register to be right, and the pipeline to which the sets the the the, the instructions should be farmed. Now that leaves more information in the instruction which needs to be decoded but it could be done uh, in a satellite form at the source just before right before the actual instruction so standard pipeline thing the instruction goes to rip blah 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 you get a notification back that um, the output is available and uh, that gets uh, goes into the register right I think and again it's the same exactly the same as the read reg files it's, it's, it's the same thing All right now uh, I'll show you the source code, code uh, for this uh, later and link, link you to it. Um, now, in addition to that, in the same class, there is a debug DMI interface, um, which is uh, mirrored on um, the uh, RISC-V uh, uh, DMI concept 
um, and conforms to the same um, uh, 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 API. Um, but um, it's actually implemented in MicroWatt. Um, their MicroWatt decided to do their own uh, DMI uh, addressing uh, and system. Uh, so we just copy that and we're fully compatible with it. Now, um, this manages the core and it's fronted by a JTAG tap interface. So there's an adapter from JTAG to debug, um, which is not part of the, the, um, uh, the, 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 the actual uh, core itself, but it's just a, just a front. And through the DMI interface, what the MicroWatt team did was they defined some registers. So that when you poke the particular address, um, it means uh, 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 it gives you some bits which indicate, please start or please stop or please reset the core. So um, over that interface, we can send uh, commands. And because it's linked to JTAG, we can send JTAG commands to start, stop and reset the core. And that hooks into the finite state machine here. So you send the command over, over, D, over DMI and it acknowledges immediately but of course, you cut the, 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 the finite state machine, the actual execution is in the middle of executing things. So it can only just what you have to do is wait and you get some information back. Which, uh, will, um, uh, 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 um, you have to make another DMI request to say, have you stopped? Uh, what is your status? And you'll be able to check it if it's stopping and if it's stopped. <laughs> All right. So again, over this DMI interface, you've got PC update and read, and you have register read. So we have yet more ports uh, into the reg, reg files here. Uh, the one thing that I've missed uh, to say is that um, uh, the, the load store pipeline is what accesses the, the wishbone data bus. Okay, All right. So there's these two, two um, uh, 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 wishbone masters. Um, one is the um, uh, instruction uh, wishbone uh, master and the data uh, wishbone master. Uh, the actual core itself does not get involved at all with load store accesses. It's handled entirely down, right down at the end of the pipeline. So with that in mind as what the actual core is, we can now move to where the, 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 the interface is. Uh, here's a what the contents of that previous slide was with the, the previous um, uh, diagram was with the test issuer. So you can see the instruction wishbone bus is the input and output from it. From it. Uh, the data wishbone master is uh, on here. We have some um, interrupt lines coming in, uh, which go into the ZIX um, uh, 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 controller, which has a ICP uh, pr presentation layer, uh, interrupt controller presentation and interrupt controller session layer. But it becomes a definition of what the the, the, the interfaces are for, uh, for a test issuer. And we have the DMI interface. Right? So then there's also those pipelines and registers and also the, de the actual de decoders, the main decoder and the satellite decoder. So as far as everything else is concerned, um, you see these basically these four sets of wires, the DMI, which includes um, the, which everything for, for, for JTAG, um, the interrupts and the wishbone buses. You see nothing, nothing else, literally nothing else. You don't see the registers because that's handled through the DMI. Um, you don't see any pipelines or anything like that. So this is just this, these four interfaces. Now, um, on the other side, um, uh, we have a, a JTAG tab. Right. Now, this is a standard four pin interface. And um, uh, th um, what uh, Chips for Makers has designed into uh, the, uh, the uh, JTAG tap interface on uh, a Namigen, in, written in Namigen, is the ability to add a wishbone master. We also added the ability to add a DMI interface. And there's also a standard boundary scan system. All right. Now, most FPGA uh, 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 open source code does not have boundary scan. Why would you need it? And the reason why you won't need it is because you can very simply reconfigure your FPGA bitstream to use different pins. You just recompile the, um, uh, uh, the bitstream. Right, so this becomes one of the key differences between um, FPGA programming for FPGA and programming for, um, for ASICs. You have no idea if the if when you have a, an error, one of the crucial things to understand is that you need um, when you have a bug and you've basically got a black box. 
the last thing you want is more than one thing that you uh, that could possibly be a failure. And the reason for that is because if you make a test where that test is um, a single thing, success or fail, if there are two possible things that could have failed, you have four possible permutations, only one of which you can dictate when you get your black box outside success. One of those permutations will be uh, uh, because of the two failures, uh, because of the two things. The other three possible permutations, you have no idea which one of those two things caused the failure. And so um, uh, let us say that you have a failure in the core and you have a failure in the I.O. pad. From the outside, you cannot get access through the JTAG interface to determine, you know, my IPO, I'm not getting response on this I.O. pad. Why is that? Well, you don't know. It could be a failure in the core. It could be a failure in the I.O. pad. And you cannot tell which it is. So by having a boundary scan and separating, you see this break here, you cut the entire core out of the equation and go directly to the I.O. pads. And by going directly to the I.O. pads, you, you are able to determine if it is the actual I.O. pad. Um, and then if that succeeds, then you go back to enabling the core and you can by logical deduction, if there is a fault and the I.O. pads are OK, you know it was the, was the core. But unless you have this, um, the ability to directly test this one and one only one thing, you cannot determine which, which one it was. So, um, uh, so that's, why, we do, that's why, why you have boundary scan. Now, the reason why you don't have boundary scan in FPGA is because you don't need it. You can just reprogram the FPGA. To, to, to route the, um, the uh, uh, peripheral directly to the pads. And if it's not the right thing that you need at that particular time, just go back to the source code, reconfigure the source code, recompile the, 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 the bit stream to connect different peripherals and upload it to the, upload the new bit stream to the FPGA. Clearly, you cannot do that <laughs> in a um, uh, uh, in an ASIC. So, it, it, Litex is actually configured. It's not configured to understand this concept because it has been designed exclusively for FPGAs. Consequently, we had to do a lot of hacking. To get it to understand this, um, uh, 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 the, the 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 separation between uh, between the two, and I'll go over that in a in a um, uh, in, in a thing in a, later on. So whilst Litex itself defines the, the 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 peripherals, which by the way are nothing to do with the core itself, the core is just it does um, it does memory access only it's been memory map peripherals so this is why you have to have memory map peripherals because the only interfaces that the core understands is via memory and interrupts okay so consequently the peripherals must define their public uh, interface as far as the core is concerned in terms of memory and interrupts and on the other side will be the I.O. pads that come out. So um, uh, in the test uh, chip LS180, we included we wanted to include SPI, I2C, UART, SDMMC, uh, SDRAM, which is uh, DDR1, it's 133 megahertz DDR1, um, uh, GPIO, external interrupt, and PWM. But it turned out that we had too many resources, um, I think, so we cut out some, many of these, but kept uh, EINT, GPIO, SDRAM, uh, UART, uh, uh, I2C, and one SPI master. Now, um, what they would then have to do is route those 
So Litex defines a set of pads that are normally connected directly to the FPGA uh, 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 resources, internal resources. We had to route those to the JTAG TAP boundary scan. And the JTAG TAP boundary scan to do a MUX switch that then either routes to the uh, to, to the, through to some uh, internal uh, registers which you can read or write to via JTAG or if you flip the switch the MUX reroutes it to the actual IO pads that would normally Litex would connect directly to itself. Now um, this uh, a minor complication is that those um, uh, uh, <coughs> The JTAB tap uh, code is actually inside test issuer um, as one of its sub modules. So, uh, in um, but I, for convenience, what I've done is I've written this diagram out in such a way that it um, uh, 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 appears is not quite quite the, ca the, the case that. But is this uh, component here is actually inside here, and what that means is that every single pin on here defined by Litex has to be on the public interface here but it is not part of the actual core itself the core only understands memory wishbone and interrupts okay so Let's move on to what the, some of the differences are when you have a, a between an FPGA and an ASIC. In an in an in any ASIC, you have LUT fours or sometimes LUT sixes, and these are lookup tables, which have four input uh, uh, that can, depending on the permutations of the inputs, um, it will create via a lookup table, hence LUT LUT, a um, a, com a combination of outputs. So if you have uh, four inputs you have a 16 entry state table which creates based on any any of those possible combinations of the four inputs will produce outputs and this basically allows you to emulate and I do mean emulate ZOR gates, MUX gates, NOT gates, NAND gates, AND gates, blah, blah, blah all the standard um, um, the standard um, uh, um, uh, 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 gate things. Now, one thing that LUT fours can't do is they can't be a BRAM, a block RAM. Um, you also have DFFs, um, uh, 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 which are S uh, which are latches, um, and uh, typically uh, the more advanced uh, um, uh, 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 FPGAs will also have a DSP. Right, and the DSP will have multiply and add, etc., etc., because to implement multiply uh, is a massive number of gates, um, and um, it's just a, a waste of resources, waste of LUT force. You're better off doing it in a very efficient manner um, as a dedicated DSP block. And then you have GPIO of different types. Now, um, here we have um, uh, uh, one of the one of one of the key things. Uh, GPIO. Um, you, you, you basically reconfigurable GPIO. You have to have an input, you have to an output, and you have to have an output enable. Now I, I won't go into the differences about things like um, uh, DDR um, uh, pads and um, and um, uh, 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 CERDI's, um uh, differential pair pads. But basically, they're, they're exactly the same. They have an input and they have an output, and they have an output enable. And when you raise the output enable high. The pad becomes becomes an output when you wave it at it low, it becomes an input. All right. Um, so here's a um, you know, you know, the LibreSoft core, um, and um, uh, it it's the separate for, separate from that is the Litex um, uh, peripheral generator, um, and the whole lot gets compiled to Verilog. There's one Verilog file for LibreSock, one Verilog for, for Litex peripherals. They get thrown to the tools and the tools generate 
uh, 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 the cells and the resources uh, generates a bitstream which will conform to the things and do everything that's needed and that's that's handled by Lightex but there's several other tools um, as, as well. Namigen itself can actually target um, uh, protect, uh, no, a huge number of FPGAs with the different uh, platforms on which those um, uh, appear. Now um, oh, and also in the FPGA, you have a PLL block. Okay. Now, in an ASIC, you get no assistance of any kind from uh, any res resources. You have to do everything yourself. Right. So you have to have a PLL block. You have to have SRAM blocks. You have to have MUX blocks. You have to have a, a flip flop block, a ZOR block, a NAND block, a NOT block, a buffer block. Uh, a, 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 um, a, a, a diode, uh, everything. And these are called cells. And um, don't be confused by the term cell. It means any collection of gates. So there is even a LibreSoc cell and it's 130,000 other cells which are laid out in gate level. There is a PLL cell and that's about... Um, 10,000 uh, transistors, um, uh, a thing containing, comprising some other cells. So please don't be confused when you see the the, um, uh, the, the concept of cell referring to something that's uh, uh, only got five transistors and the exact same term referring to something that's got half a million or a million transistors in it. Welcome to ASIC industry, ASIC VLSI industry. Um, so there is also an IOPAD cell all right which has to be provided now these are usually stat provided by the foundry and the foundry puts you under nda which from an academic perspective prevents you and prohibits you from even um being able to uh do uh publish academic papers all right because the you you use some nda material you are prevented and prohibited from publishing isn't that wonderful so um, this is why there is a huge amount of interest in NDA-free cell libraries and um, in NDA-free uh, foundry processes, in particular MOSIS. But MOSIS comes with some punishment in that it is double the size of the optimized cells that are non-NDA-free and so only some foundries will refuse to accept um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, MOSIS uh, uh, formatted um, um, MOSIS uh, formatted um, uh, uh, GDS2 files. So you have to be, you know, it, it's it's a it's a tiptoeing nightmare to be honest. Um, and one of the key things. So we have to have a PLL. We have to have an SRAM block um, or SRAM blocks, but you know, for register files, for onboard memory, um, and all these cell libraries. Now we've. Um, uh, I won't go into detail on that thing, but basically here you have all the resources on the FPGA side. You have all of these resources already done for you. Your LUT4s, your BRAMs, um, etc. They're already laid out. And the uh, FPGA, you are allowed to root that pre-existing uh, uh, fabric um, uh, but through the bitstream, the bitstream gets uploaded and um, uh, um, uh, and, and uh, programs that routing. It's incredibly expensive um, in, 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 in both area and power consumption, but it's reprogrammable. Whereas for the um, the ASIC tools will actually lay out and then you go and print it out and you cannot change it after it's um, after it's laid out, laid out, unless it's actually an imp unless your ASIC is an implementation of an FPGA. <laughs> quite funny um, now um, the in out and output enable here which in light exit connect it gets connected as just a G GPIO um, here the the the, the that, that triplet of in out and output enable per pin on your interface need to be passed right the way through the entire source code, entire netlist until they hit the individual pad, IO pad, IO cell, containing that in, out and output enable. Right? And this makes for a very crucial uh, thing which 
Litex, Litex doesn't actually support this, and we had to hack it into submission to get it to 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 um, to, to to do so. In addition to that, we had to define um, a, 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 a platform which had its own PLL, but as a black box cell. And likewise, the, the SRAM. So in Litex, if you have a look at the platform, the, the things, the Litex platform code defines and understands the PLL block and wires it up for you so that the, when the bitstream is programmed, it will go into the, the, the um, uh, you know, it will enable and connect everything up. But here, because it's a, a PLL block, we need a, a, a .v file, which um, a, a Verilog uh, module, which represents that, and Litex needs to um, uh, doesn't so much need to know about it as as the LibreSet code um, uh, just needs to uh, 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 tell the uh, VLSI tools about it um, as yet another cell. But in this particular case, because it was defined externally by a, 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 um, a LIP6 uh, team. Um, and because Yosis doesn't understand it, we actually had to mark that PLL cell as a black box to Yosis to get it to not try and do some optimization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And likewise for the um, um, uh, for the uh, 4K SRAMs, of which we put four down. So you won't see a 4K SRAM in the FPGA, and you won't see a LibreSoc PLL in the FPGA because we are using the existing PLL and the existing block RAM of the FPGA resources. Okay. So um, this is why um, uh, uh, Litex it, it here um, we we can't we couldn't because of the JTAG boundary scan we actually had to root the <coughs> the uh, peripheral set out of Litex into LibreSoc, LibreSoc handed the JTAG boundary scan muxing, then route it back into Litex and for Litex to go and uh, 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 create the pin set, remember this triple pad in and out and output enable, for every single one of the pins. And finally that will be passed to um, uh, those parafiles, one of the LibreSoc.v and Litex, um, uh, Litex of, uh, uh, v would be passed to um, uh, uh, the um, the, the, the VLSI tools. So um, here's your here's the workflow. I apologise, I've missed off the um, PLL.v and the um, uh, SK 4K SRAM uh, 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 black box um, .v files. So at the top here, you've got the test issue where you've got JTAG tab with its JTAG tap interface with the DMI interface and the ZIX controller. That is then, um, because that is in Namigen, it is handed to Namigen uh, compiler. Namigen compiles that to a Yosis uh, RTLIL file, or aka ILANG file, intermediary language. Yosis then picks that back up and uh, reads it in and converts it to Verilog and then saves, and this is all under the control of Namigen. Namigen then saves that as a a Verilog file which we chose to call ls180.v. On the other side, you then run a, another make file command which uh, uh, runs uh, Litex uh, uh, to auto generate the uh, Litex peripheral um, uh, fabric inter interconnect. And that uh, our use of Litex has told it about the uh, uh, the various interfaces, which will uh, go over the source code in a, in a, in a bit, and um, uh, uh, that will um, uh, uh, generate a LibreSoc uh, uh, .v file um, uh, again in Verilog. Now those two files are then handed through. Um, so if you uh, to 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 the different um, uh, uh, to, uh, workflow toolchain toolchain. So if you want to do FPGA, you run one command um, to build the um, uh, FPGA bitstream, and and if on the other hand, if you want uh, to uh, compile it to a, 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 a GDS2 file, um, you hand it over to Coriolis2. Now. Um, So 
let's say we go the FPGA route. We take the two Verilog uh, files, ls180.v and uh, uh, Librasoc.v, and through the uh, uh, Litex uh, uh, command line, behind the scenes it will run uh, Yosis uh, uh, to read those two files in and convert um, as likely to a BLIF file um, uh, or, um, or an iLang file. And then it will run next PNR ECB5. Now, um, Yosis is actually pre-programmed, built in to understand the ECP5 uh, cell structure. These things here, how many LUT4s, how many BRAMs, how many DSP multiply slices, how, how, how much GPIO, where is it, what is it, um, uh, how many PLLs it has, etc., etc. And so um, when uh, NextPNR receives the information about instructions, it will do a place and route, next PNR, place and route, and generate a bitstream. And that bitstream can then be uploaded to ECB5 and you've got a representation of your HDL, which actually runs at the gate uh, uh, um, uh, 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 on, your, uh, uh, on your FPGA. Taking the same route, um, uh, going back to the ASIC, um, Again, uh, interestingly, it uses YOSIS um, uh, 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 thing, and this time it compares to uh, BLIF, um, uh, and it is uh, at this point. Uh, remember um, that uh, YOSIS doesn't necessarily know about the um, uh, uh, the geometry and the cell library, what the cells actually have. So you have to tell it. And in our case, what we've done is we've uh, a thing. We there's a couple of routes, but basically they both go something called uh, FlexLib, which is by Chips for Makers, um, uh, which um, uh, contains some contains the cells. And Yosis is intelligent and general enough that when it's given those cells and told what the inputs and outputs are, it can actually do the mapping. It doesn't matter if you if what you know if you have a MUX4 or a MUX8 or, or um, a, LUT, a LUT4 or a LUT6 or a LUT8 or a buffer with this many. It, it's absolutely brilliant. It will just um, uh, uh, map your uh, HDL down to onto those um, those cells. It's a cell mapper where a cell standard cell library happens to be a list of cells. So that um, outbit outputs a BLIF file which are Leos um, uh, and Coriolis 2 um, uh, uh, have been uh, programmed to understand and read. Now, what Coriolis do is it does is it actually understands um, uh, um, it, 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 its internal data structures. It uses a subset of VHDL. So um, uh, there is a BLF to uh, uh, a VHD converter. Um, which uh, then uh, it can be uh, picked up again uh, by the place and root uh, program, which is uh, uh, controlled under the control of Python programs uh, settings.py and do design.py as part of Coriolis 2. After the place and root, which takes over an hour to 90 minutes, um, you end up with a, a net list which um, again you can extract and end up with this VLL subset but it will be at the gate level um, uh, 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 so or cell level of connected connections to the cells and consequently that cell library is an important input into this phase here which is where you pick up the logical representations of the cell library in either Verilog and it's uh, or, or, say, um, Verilog or VHDL and it's why you have those so um, it will also uh, in um, it also will output a spice model, a spice net list, uh, the same thing. Uh, so it's really very, very convenient, and you get the GDS2 file. The GDS2 file you send off to the uh, foundry, and you get your chip back. Now, um, one thing I didn't uh, mention here um, is that uh, uh, the Librasoc 180 pen marks is a crucial strategic part of this uh, uh, system. And it's related to the peripherals. Um, it actually ties in in three and possibly even four different ways. And it's, it's basically, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly shocked and taken aback that in the standard uh, industry practice, you duplicate all of this information. 
but as a software engineer, that's completely insane. <laughs> um, you, you, if you don't have an automated way to represent the pins of your and of your peripherals, you end up duplicating that information. You make mistakes. You can potentially make mistakes. Um, uh, and if you want to make even one single change, which we actually did. Um, for the uh, 180 nanometer uh, um, uh, layout, by, because we needed to move the power uh, 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 power pads, um, you need to make changes in four separate places, but data going right back into your HDL and into the LiteX peripherals and into the Corona that of the of the of the um, of the ASIC. So. To avoid that insanity, what we did was we got this program, Pinmux program, which auto-generates a JSON file, which every single one of these uh, separate components, the Namijan HDL, the LiteX peripherals, and the Coriolis 2 uh, Corona uh, generator can pick up and understand. All right. Incidentally, you can also generate markdown files from the same output. And even we chose to generate a um, the, uh, um, where is it? Uh, I'm jumping ahead here. Yes, here we go. Uh, we chose this diagram is auto-generated. I did not write this by hand. All of those pads on the output and the input were put on through a Python program, which outputted an SVG diagram. Okay. That's the kind of thing that a software engineer would do, but a hardware engineer would not because they've not trained. Hardware engineers are not trained in software engineering techniques. So, um, I'm just going to pause the recording now um, and bring something on on screen um, uh, externally because I wanted to show you um, uh, the differences um, between uh, when you run uh, Yosis uh, uh, on a um, on a, some HDL for uh, an FPGA and when you run it for ASIC. So please let me just uh, go off screen and pause this, and I'll be back in a second. Okay. So this is a uh, diagram, which uh, a partitioned uh, signal um, uh, uh, module, which we're developing for LibreSoft for to do uh, um, automatic SIMD. And this is uh, a Yosis show top command on um, on one of the test benches. And you can see um, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, we've got uh, modules here for uh, there's a greater than or equal uh, test um, uh, as part of this, etc. Et and we can, uh, uh, if I do a, an additional command, show eq underscore two, and we can see that this is doing a partitioned equal. All right, and there's another sub module here, uh, greater than thing. All right, now. So bear in mind that these are high level connections. This is a net list uh, for, the, um, for the design, show top. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to do a synth ECP5 return and show top. Yeah, whoops, it's a big design so it takes quite a lot. And let's, here we go and let's uh, zoom in. Okay, so there's an amp output um, a thing. Uh, these, I believe, are some of the LUT4 cells. Oh no, here we go, here's your LUT4 cells. All right, okay. So um, it's turned it into a series of resources because uh, Yosis contains an understanding built into the actual source code of uh, Yosis. Uh, uh, the um, lattice ECP5 um, uh, uh, cells, which we described on the other, um, you know, uh, on the on previous diagrams, you know, the uh, LUT4s, uh, BRAMs, uh, uh, PLL uh, uh, things, um, uh, um, MUX, DSP, mole slice, etc., uh, etc. Et um, uh, things. So that's the, that's that's what you end up with there. So let's now load that in again. Control T, Yosis. Read uh, I'd like that file proc synth. Uh, so sh uh, show top again. Let's let's have a look at that. 
let's do all so we're back to that top level design there and now I'm going to run proc and uh, sync no, no, I think, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do read lang and just plain synth. Now, this will use a default standard cell library. And it's taking forever. Dun, 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 show. Okay, it's finished and it's done. Right, I didn't do flatten, so it will do it as show top. It will, it will do it as a series of sub-modules. So I will need to do show add underscore one. And here we go. Because I used the standard cell library, it's now instead of LUT4 and etc. etc. It's assumed that we're using AND cells. And ah, oh, here's a MUX cell. So there's an AND, an AND, uh, a NAND uh, gate, an, an exclusive NOR cell, um, an OR cell. And so, and so on and so forth. And so coming back to here, that's uh, what we do is um, we, we hand it the flexlib uh, cell library, which contains uh, um, the cells that have been designed by uh, um, uh, chips for makers. And um, those, um, the uh, Coriolis, Iosis uh, 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 will then um, incorporate that and generate the BLF BLF file um, uh, from the, uh, uh, the, the that uh, the, it's that cell library. Right. So it's quite um, it's really quite straightforward. Um, but it's just that normally this um, cell library would be under NDA. You would not be permitted access to it, uh, um, or uh, you'd not be able to publish any academic work um, having um, signed such an NDA, um, uh, which is a you know, except at a very high level, um, uh, and consequently, things that there's been something called Free PDK45 has been designed, which uh, Flexlib has um, been ported to that, so you can actually compile and it, um, compile uh, to an academic use um, uh, 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 cell library. Now, there's no point in taping it out because it will be uh, it contain nonsense. It's ghost cells, um, but you will actually be able to complete a GDS2 uh, uh, um, uh, tape out using that um, academic ghost library. So um, with uh, with that, uh, 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 so so um, so let's let's recap. So we went over what the LibreSoft core contains. We described that it has these interfaces, um, which is memory. Um, interrupts and DMI only. Um, that the JTAG tap is uh, separate from that, but has a boundary scan and has its own uh, wishbone master, uh, which is completely separate from the uh, test issuer um, instruction and data wishbone. So that the uh, over the JTAG tap, we can get direct access both to the uh, the 4K SRAMs and to the uh, peripherals and test them independently of the core. Then we described um, uh, 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 some of the differences in uh, the resources that are available within the um, uh, within a, 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 an FPGA and, a, and an ASIC, in particular that you just don't have anything existing at all, but also that you have to have this uh, in the GPIO side, you have to have this in, out and output enable route all the way through to the um, uh, throughout the entirety of thing per per pin um, on on air, on your peripherals, and then we went over the um, that the um, uh, 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 Namigen contributes the um, uh, uh, ultimately uh, the LS one eighty dot V uh, is compiled to Verilog and Litex peripheral uh, system uh, generates the fabric where the LibreSoft LS180 is a component connected to that fabric and then you can make the choice to um, either um, uh, compile it to FPGA um, uh, where the tools will take care of um, uh, uh, connecting in. Uh, Yosis, will, Yosis will take care of uh, introducing you to the ECP5 cells and on the ASIC side Yosis will, it, it, uh, will take care of introducing the 
cell library, the standard cell library. And by the way, this is where we introduced the black box PLL and the black box 4K SRAM cell at this point. And then uh, 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 told, uh, Alliance um, uh, Coriolis 2 um, was told about those as well. Um, so that it could actually do the um, the place and route uh, of those uh, 4K SRAM and the PLL cells, which is these tiny little diagrams here, which you can see, you can see them here at this point. This is the at the top left, along the top. There's the uh, 4K SRAMs in that tiny block in the top right hand corner is the PLL, which was automatically placed, um, uh, manually placed, um, and so were those 4K SRAMs. Um, uh, followed by uh, automatic place and route of the rest of the uh, 130,000 um, uh, um, uh, uh, standard cells. So, um, with that in mind, let's do a, a dive into the uh, into the source code. So, the first thing uh, I want to show you here is the uh, is the uh, pins, the pin banks, right? So, this is one of the output auto generated outputs from uh, the PINMUX program, which uh, is, a, is very useful to be able to review, have I got the positions of the, um, uh, 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 you know, the uh, power and ground right? Are they properly balanced and distributed throughout um, uh, and, and so on? Uh, then um, that's uh, also that, that then these PIN, pin numbers uh, uh, and positions then match up directly with these uh, uh, with the information here. Bear in mind both these outputs, this markdown file and this SVG image were auto generated from the same program. And that program is here. Um, uh, uh, LibreSoc.org uh, Git repositories, the Pinmux uh, repository, uh, source plex plus ls180.py. And here you can see that we've defined the pin banks. There are 32 pins on each side, north, east, south, and west here. Um, and then uh, we define that uh, we actually want on the west side, uh, starting at uh, pin uh, 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 zero, we want 15 pins. Um, uh, uh, so I want um, uh, six pins. Uh, of the uh, SD RAM, uh, which turns out to be address, four to, uh, address lines four to nine. Uh, likewise, then uh, that gets split up here. Um, there's a second split of another chunk of those things. We should actually be able to trace those through. So let's have a look at the west side here. North, east, south, west. Oh yes, look. These ones here, whoops. That is six address lines, 84 down to 89 in reverse. Reverse order, because otherwise it would go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. And likewise, you can see these ones here, which go from the, 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 the those, uh, how many did it ask for? Uh, 15 pin, uh, 15 pins starting at number 10, West 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> You get the idea. Oh, wait, I know it's from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There. Yeah. Starting from 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 here. All right. So um, because in reverse order, it goes from the, that one uh, backwards. Anyway, you get the general idea. So this program. Software engineer, remember, this program auto generates a JSON file. That JSON file is picked up by other programs, including the uh, Litex and including um, uh, uh, the uh, JTAG boundary scan and including Coriolis 2. Okay. So um, let's have a look now at um, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, LS180. This is our integration with uh, 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 LibreSoft and, and Litex. Now, Um, Litex is primarily designed for FPGAs, so let's take as focus explicitly on the um, on the uh, uh, DDR memory interface, the SD, SDR as it's called. Right? 
here is the uh, uh, ECP5, Lattice ECP5 uh, DDR5. So it contains the pins, it contains the, uh, uh, takes care of the clock, um, uh, uh, etc., etc. Because remember that the ACP5 has an onboard built in DDR5. Right? Um, and um, or you can use it to do a DDR a DDR3 file. Um, so you need to um, uh, have some way to set up the PLL um, so that it etc etc etc. And you also need to have some memory registers so that you can then program that file via a DFI a standard DFI interface. Okay. At the pads. Once you get outside, and here's the pad list for um, a list for, for, for standard uh, standard DRAM: uh, read address, row, bank address, um, address line, chip select, uh, reset, uh, clock enable, uh, on die termination, um, and the the, the pads and things. But the the thing is that um, once you have connected to and you need to you 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 need to tell the bitstream if I next PR AC5 how how to connect and what to connect to. But once once you have connected uh, said what the connections are, it ends there. Okay, All right. So those three wires, if you have an an, an I/O uh, uh, wire, which you will for the data because that is both input and output. Uh, DQ. Here we go. Uh, 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 output enable DQS output enable so it's directional it's bi-directional um, uh, uh, once you have that um, output the you no longer need to track or trace through anything uh, uh, beyond that point it goes into uh, as far as you're concerned a black box for the ASIC on the other hand you are directly responsible for routing the netlist um, uh, th through to the D DDR uh, to, to the DRAM uh, memory, uh, um, uh, the address line or the data line, uh, the data pad for D0, the data pad for D1, the data pad for D2. And consequently, you need a completely different type of um, uh, 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 specification for um, for uh, a, a, um, a DRAM file because it needs to route those three things. But worse than that, it, it there is a completely separate thing from the pads. Um, uh, the set pads, remember, are separated. Um, back at this diagram, the Litex normally would connect these directly from here to here, from the Litex things to the IO pads. But in our case, because we're doing a boundary scan and we want that boundary scan to be include being able to test the DRAM phi pads independently of Litex and the test issue a core, we need to um, separate that. And, and so um, this is why back in here we have our own phi class, which is pretty much a direct copy of the standard generic SDR phi right this is pretty much exactly the same code but here we have um, these 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 are uh, things this class is the reason why um, we had to do this because we need it in in the um, uh, Litex code it assumes that it's buried in that SDR output class the uh, input output and output enable are buried in that uh, class whereas we need access to having put those um, the um, the uh, the information into the uh, uh, SDR um, uh, uh, output class we need then need to get at it um, so um, uh, to think so it's it's this is why we had to write our own uh, for, you know, write our own files which specifically understand the context of ASIC not an assumption that it's going to be taken over by um, uh, FPGA um, uh, uh, transparent uh, opaque block as far as we're, we're concerned. Now, uh, if we have a, a search for Gen SDR5 in here, this is uh, the Gen SDR5 
instance. Right. So the way that these, um, the, um, the, the LiteX works as far as um, uh, 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 an SDR, uh, uh, a DRAM thing is concerned, is that because there are so many different um, uh, different um, types of DDR, DDR memory, they have gone ahead and cleanly separated the phi from the uh, phi, how it accesses the I/O and manages the um, the, the uh, PLL from the rest of the code, and so consequently, you can't pass in the SDR phi class to um, the um, uh, add SDRAM function LiteX function, and it will um, it will connect those and wire those two up for you. Right. Things were a, a little bit different for the rest of the peripherals. The only other peripheral in LiteX which handles it that way is um, the SDMMC. Um, uh, we had to actually remove the SDMMC because it was a, a, a SD card because it was too big um, to go into the um, to the ASIC. Um, but we're still left with that one. Now, in all of the other cases, unfortunately, what we had to do was things like the UART phi um, here and uh, the GPIO and um, uh, the SPI um, interfaces, none of those were, were designed similarly to uh, abstract out. So we had to literally take a copy of the uh, standard SPI master uh, and GPIO tri-state uh, uh, classes in LiteX and adapt them and just do a global, pretty much a global uh, search and replace substitution, getting those to understand the, fa for the, for the fact that we needed the um, these triple uh, I/O in, I, in, out, and output enable pins to be come both in to the uh, things and then come back out again from these uh, uh, class uh, instances, these uh, modules, such that on extraction, so to extracting the outputs, we could then correct, connect them to the Corona through the uh, through um, uh, through Coriolis two. Um, and it's uh, uh, where the, the difference then is that the, the, the FPGA, it's a black box. You hand those, uh, the, the, the triple in, out, and, uh, and output enable to uh, the, um, uh, the black box of the uh, FPGA resource, and you never see it again. Now, um, uh, here what we also had to do, um, this is a particularly obtuse um, is um, no, not that one. Is uh, we actually had to have uh, an allocation, an allocator which duplicated, and that comes back to here. Um, these these pin pads inside LiteX, uh, we had to make a separate set um, and a platform resource which had um, uh, 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 one set which we called core because it went to the core ultimately. It went through to the code inside test, test issuer, and the other one was the standard I/O pads. And let me just track that um, thing. Labor sock. Uh, LS180. So uh, here we define the um, the platform. So these are the the, the resources. This is the I/O resources um, that are available. Uh, 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 clock and reset, JTAG, I squared, I squared C, SPI, uh, SD card, uh, SD RAM. That we <laughs> we actually had to um, uh, to allocate a new set of those. Um, via a platform, a constraint manager, a LiteX constraint manager, um, uh, which was a, which uh, if you if you look closely inside um, uh, 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 LiteX, you will find that it already allocates uh, an I/O. There's that I/O, so the pad resources, and that is a separate resource from the one that LiteX normally um, allocates. Um, here is a, our pin specs uh, thing, which reads the JSON file, sets up some pins. And then uh, enumerates all of them and creates that JTAG boundary scan 
um, uh, 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 on a per uh, 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 pair um, it, on a per pin basis it creates a pair of these two of the of the pin that as it's connected to Litex and a pin as to be connected to the IO pad um, and then unlike a uh, normal uh, 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 Litex uh, uh, thing where you would just pass the, um, uh, the that platform resource uh, with the pin definition to uh, 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 to um, Litex and it would just get on with it. We need to pass one of those uh, um, set of pads, and I'm just trying to find it here. You pass one of the set of I/O pads. Here you go. CPU pads. SD, so, that's the, for the for the for the for the DRAM. So you pass the CPU pads to the uh, DRAM phi. But further down, where is it? Um, behind the scenes here. Um, uh, uh, when add SD RAM. The add SD RAM, which is a standard function, will get the the standard uh, standard um, uh, 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 Litex I/O uh, things, um, and it, they they are not actually connected. So normally, uh, you would pass that um, through um, a thing, and it would be a direct connection between the I/O pads in here. So, um, what to get that to happen, you would back here where was it again oh yes it's already highlighted um you would not pass self.cpu.cpu pads to the thing you would pass the um the self.cpu.io um, pads uh, for a uh, um, uh, uh, thing to 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 the uh, SDR file and that would bypass unfortunately that would be, being the standard way that Litex is used that would completely bypass the JTAG boundary scan Consequently, that would make our test uh, our chip untestable. So we don't want to do that. So anyway, we had to do exactly the same thing for the GPIO for the uh, U UART. Uh, absolutely every peripheral. The only ones that we did not do that for was for JTAG itself. So JTAG doesn't try and boundary scan itself. Um, uh, one other thing, by the way, you will know that um, uh, an FPGA itself has a JTAG um, uh, uh, interface on it. But that JTAG interface, it contain, um, uh, 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 is completely separate. So we actually had to have some uh, code. Um, and I'm going to see if I can um, uh, C4M JTAG. Yeah, here we go. So um, this was the code that we used from Chips for Makers, and it actually implements uh, a fully functioning um, uh, 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 a JTAG um, uh, uh, tap interface. Um, so it supports the full uh, uh, um, uh, uh, JTAG uh, finite state machine of being able to support TDI, TDO, um, and so on. Um, but what's really nice about it is that um, uh, you can add these buses and you can add um, uh, uh, the, the the JTAG boundary scan I/O um, uh, uh, you know it, 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 that you need, um, and you can add a, a wishbone interface. And if you want a shift register for anything else, you can you can do so. Um, it's extremely smart. So basically, um, over JTAG um, uh, the, with this wishbone interface thing, we can actually uh, control. Um, access uh, the memory through JTAG, and it will uh, it's standard thing. It's, it's it's really very very cool. So um, let's have a look at what else we've got. So we've got that pin mux. Um, here's the um, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the pin class. Um, now um, this was uh, picked up in two places. So remember, this reads the uh, the 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 the, um, the JSON file. And that JSON file contains the uh, the pin definitions. So it's uh, passed in here as a as a pin set. Uh, it's just a Python dictionary. Um, and that creates this class pins, creates this boundary scan, the I/O types of whether it's an input and output or a bidirectional or a tri-stated. Um, here's the different types that you can have um, in out um, uh, uh, tri-stated output, in, in, in out tri-stated. Um, and um, 
uh, there, they, there we go. Um, add the uh, I/O that, that this is creating the boundary scan um, uh, for you, um, which you can then uh, do in your in your in your ASIC. And you, you, you wouldn't have this normally in an FPGA anyway, um, because why would you need it? You know, you, the, 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 the FPGA's uh, uh, I/O is assumed to be reliable. You have, you know, um, it was tested at the factory. Um, whereas, um, but here, you know, you can't, you can't get away with that. So it's an, this is another reason we think you have to have a boundary scan check, check and thing on the, on um, uh, for an ASIC because you otherwise you don't know what which, which bit is broken, um, the iPad, IO pad itself, or the 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 the, the peripheral connectivity uh, that driving that IO pad. So. Um, Now this is um, this is test issuer and test issuer here again it picks up the the pin specs again remember this is the exact same function that we used in the um, in in the Litex thing so it is, this is why it's so so important um, uh, to to make sure that you don't end up duplicating this information and maintaining it in four different places and getting it wrong um, so uh, for get underscore pin specs turn ah there we go we go and that gets passed to uh, the jtag instance um, and behind that jtag instance will be the dmi interface as well as well so um, we also um, uh, added um, via the jtag interface we added the ability to disable the uh, uh, the uh, uh, instruction uh, uh, instruction uh, wishbone interface just disconnect it completely in case there's a fault in the in the uh, in the asic uh, when it comes back um that you know the wishbone um, uh, per peripheral connection is uh, faulty um you know maybe a short circuit or something like that um also to kind of disconnect the the, the uh, data things and to disconnect the 4k srams um normally what you do is you'd have completely separate power lines for each of those things and then they would just become a, a big resistor um uh, but um, uh, you know, um, a tri-stated uh, big resistor, um, but we decided not to um, uh, to do that because it would complicate the uh, power provision to the to the chip. Um, uh, so we only have um, two rings: a 3.3 volt uh, ring for I/O and a 1.8 ring uh, for the um, for the main core. So. Um, here you can see we're uh, adding those black box cells, the uh, 4K SRAMs. Um, uh, that's the Zix interface uh, for interrupt controller. Um, uh, that's a test thing. That's our big main uh, power decoder two. Um, uh, yeah, the source goes online. You can go through it. It's divided up. thing. it's pretty readable in comments. Uh, there's a fetch, um, uh, a, a finite state machine, an issue finite state machine. Um, uh, uh, an execute one and um, uh, where's the other one uh, DMI interface uh, thing oh and the TBN deck is its own separate finite state machine which monitors the um, uh, the uh, control signals coming from the the, um, the thing so it notes it only uh, 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 goes ahead and executes um, the the deck and TB uh, finite state machine in between the cycles of the of the of the other uh, of the main core one and that comes back to here so that's what we're going over there over there all right where are we yeah so this is um this is the function which actually picks up the uh, uh, uh the, the 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 json file um and is used uh by the um by the rest of the uh, code and this is also used in the Coriolis 2. This exact same code is in uh, in uh, the Coriolis 2 thing for it to pick up the exact same JSON file and um, and, uh, and 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 and, and um, create the Corona. And that Corona was this ring here. Can you see? There's um, some uh, lines here. I know those are the I/O pads themselves, but on the inside there, there's a there's a, a, a ring, um, a thing, and, and and that this the, the positioning of these pads um, are what um, uh, uh, are what the uh, the um, the specification uh, was done was uh, done, which was back in that pinouts uh, pinouts program. So it's all it's all computer controls. There is no manual. 
uh, steps involved here. Um, uh, it's uh, quite um, uh, very quite specific. specific. But yeah, um, so uh, uh, I think we're good there. Um, so that yeah, the, the 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 main thing the main things are um, you need a boundary scan and you need the entire code base to understand it, and it roots right the way through um, pretty much absolutely um, everything. Uh, it needs to be in terms of the uh, uh, the three uh, pins to each of the I/O pads goes three wires apart from power and ground, of course. Um, uh, the uh, input, output, and output enable. Um, and the difference here, there with an FPGA, is that that's a black box where the um, uh, where the uh, tools next PNR ECP5, the place and root tool, doesn't need to know about that. Um, doesn't need to root that back out for you. Um, but instead, it sort of disappears into uh, a black box resource defined by the by the manufacturer of the FPGA. And um, uh, likewise, um, uh, 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 you you, uh, you you get a different cell library um, in effect, uh, which uh, uh, so the, the Yosis um, routing program um, uh, uh, understands. Uh, that you have a lot for cells, BRAM cells, DSP cells, GPIO cells, PLL cells, um, uh, which um, it is uh, um, uh, 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 designed to rewrite the um, uh, uh, the BLL, 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 BLL file um, uh, to uh, correspond to those uh, resources, and that's then picked up by the next PNR ECB5 tool. Whereas for the ASIC, um, uh, though there's a completely different set of cells, MUX cell, DFF cell, um, uh, XOR, NAND, NOT buffer, etc., etc., um, and even things massive things like PLL cell and 4K SRAM cell, um, uh, 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 you can tell it via market by marking those as black box uh, to get, tell it that to tell Yosis, I'm going to deal with this. I've defined this. Please don't try and replace it with something in terms of the standard cells, which we had quite a bit of a fight with uh, Yosis over that over getting it to do that, um, because if we had not marked the 4K SRAM as a black box cell, then y what Yosis would have done was it would have gone, oh, this 4K SRAM is an SRAM. I don't understand memory cells, so I'm going to create a massive set of uh, 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 flip-flops for you, um, which would have been five times bigger than the actual, no, about ten times bigger than the actual chip. Um, uh, as uh, uh, flip-flops are extraordinarily inefficient way of doing um, uh, things, but they're very, very fast. Um, so uh, you need them in some circumstances, but we, because because the 4K SRAMs are so big, uh, there's no way that we could do that, or we couldn't let um, Yosis do it, and so had to tell it, you know, treat this as a black box, please. It will be defined by um, the uh, the um, the ASIC designer who will provide us with a 4K SRAM cell, which the then Coriolis 2 is told about and places uh, um, places and then routes the connections to it, and likewise for the PLL. So, um, yeah, I think we're good there. Um, thank you very much, uh, questions. And if anybody has um, uh, any questions beyond uh, um, uh, uh, the, these uh, things, you can uh, contact us on the mailing list. Um, the result dev, here we go. Um, so uh, more information about this list here. All right. And um, you can also contact us on IRC, and you can um, uh, uh, see the I IRC logs here, um, discussions and so on. Um, uh, uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a Libra project. Um, this is this is what um, this is what you get. Um, so yeah, thank you very much.